Okay, moving on to the next team in the Big 12, and I'll start off by saying this. Last year, when the NCAA tournament got canceled, a lot of people were saying, when you look at the top of the bracket, teams that would have been number one seeds, Dayton, San Diego State, even Baylor, what ifs? If the NCAA tournament, could these teams have won a national championship or even have gotten to a Final Four? Because for those programs, last year was probably the best chance that they would ever have. And I think Kansas could be thrown into that conversation as well. Kansas was the Vegas favorite to win the big dance last year before the tournament was about to start. And no two players on any other team in America could compare to the top two that Kansas had with Devon Dotson and Yudoka Azabuki. And the rest of Kansas's talent was pretty good as well, which was really, you know, spread throughout the roster. And this year, that same supporting cast is going to be ready to take center stage. But I'm curious to see, is Kansas going to be able to replace the two-headed monster duo of Azabuki and Dotson? Dotson was an okay shooter who I think is more known for his speed and passing and just to be honest, how dynamic he was. Mike Schmitz from ESPN said he was the fastest guy in the draft, and to be honest, I'm with him 100%. So those are the two big holes that Kansas is going to have to fill right off the bat in 2020. David McCormick is a guy who has never really gotten a fair chance behind Yudoka Azabuki, and to be honest, I'm not as high on Kansas as others, but if they do want to exceed my expectations, David McCormick is a big piece to start. No one expected Yudoka Azabuki to stay all four years at Kansas. So he did, and David McCormick didn't really get a chance to start last year or the year before, or really didn't even get a chance to get significant playing time. But Bill Self did note throughout last season how good he was and how there were times last year when Bill Self wanted to play both McCormick and and as a bookie on the floor at the same time, really in the start of the season, but that didn't happen really. They did start in 18 games together, but it just kind of fell the way to Bill Self where he was just like, all right, these are two huge guys. I can't really be playing them on the floor together or else our spacing is just going to be awful. But now David McCormick has the whole position to himself and could be in for a major breakout season. He only averaged seven minutes, uh, seven points in 14 minutes last year. So ultimately, the question is, how much could he improve? Bill Self said during the offseason, I see us playing four around one a lot most of the time. We were much better playing four guards, but we're going to have to play two bigs sometimes. It'll be better playing two bigs next year because of Mitch Whitefoot, and Mitch could move around. He's really improved his stroke and could do some things. And McCormick is much more skilled moving away from the basket. And yeah, I think that is a very good sign if you're a Kansas fan. And David McCormick is one of the more important pieces to this year's Jayhawk team. The four-guard lineup around McCormick I think is pretty good. And in terms of the guys that are going to be in that four-guard lineup, there are a couple ways you could start. Marcus Garrett is one of the best defensive players in the country. To be honest, he probably is the best defensive player in the country. And he locks down other team starting point guards. So he is a huge piece for Kansas to have. Now, he is not a great shooter, but... He's a better playmaker than people realized and obviously an elite defender. I'm curious to see, okay, who exactly does Kansas plan on starting at that point guard position? Because if you start Garrett, that's fine, but is he hasn't played point guard for the last three seasons. He's never you know, picked up point guard until his senior year. How is that going to work out? Could they start Bryce Thompson, the freshman, at the one who we're going to get to in a little bit? So I do think when you look at Bill Self, there are many different options for who his starting point guard is with this Kansas team, which I think is going to be something to monitor going forward. O'Shea Abaji, who during his freshman year, if you remember, they broke his red shirt midseason, and he was good, and I expected big things from him. And he wasn't bad. He was fine. He averaged 10-4, and four and he was impressive. But what was even more impressive was the fact that Kansas was still as good as they were with him only averaging 10-4. and four. I think he's going to need to make a jump forward this year as a guy who could possibly be the go-to bucket getter in the starting five for Kansas. You also have one of the best Juco players in the country, Tyon Grant Foster, who has some NBA buzz around him. 
and a five-star freshman in Bryce Thompson, who I think is going to get a legitimate chance to play right away. Kansas's identity and versatility is going to be with length, as they don't start a player under 6'5". Their bench is filled with key pieces from last year who I really like, mainly Christian Braun. He's a consistent scorer who is really going to provide you with some punch off the bench. And I'm telling you, last year, he was one of the more important players for Kansas. He's very underrated. You see him on the floor and you're like, how is this kid good? But he just makes basket after basket after basket. Christian Braun, I'm a huge fan of his. And then even guys like Tristan and Aruna and uh, Jalen Wilson. These guys are former top 100 recruits and they should hopefully get a little bit more of a chance to play this year. Now, Kansas doesn't have enough shooting or a true point guard, so... You need McCormick to improve. You need the experience of Garrett and Abaji to be useful and the upside of the newcomers to be successful. Those are going to have to be the puzzle pieces that are going to have to fit together in order for Kansas to live up to the hype. As much as I love Marcus Garrett, I don't know if Kansas is going to be able to be as good and as dynamic as they've been in the Bill Self era with him as your main option on offense. And maybe this kid, Tyon Grant Foster, becomes that, right? Maybe he leads Kansas in scoring. Maybe Oshai Abaji takes that jump. But right now, I need to see a consistent score from Kansas that gets buckets until I'm comfortable saying, okay, I think this Kansas team could be as good as some of the other Kansas teams of the past, including last year. Each, within each of the last couple seasons, right? Kansas has had a Devon Dotson return. They've had even a LeGerald Vick return who can make shots. Devontae Graham, Frank Mason. They don't really have a guy like that on this team who is scoring for the team, but they have all these guys, and throughout the last several seasons, they've been okay and they've had experience, but guys like Garrett, guys like Abaji, guys like uh, McCormick, they need to take that next jump forward. This Kansas team kind of reminds me of the Kansas team with Kelly Oubre and Cliff Alexander and Wayne Selden. So lengthy, so versatile, so athletic. They also had a young Frank Mason. They had a Devontae Graham and and, uh, before they were good. They also had Perry Ellis. And if you remember, that Kansas team got absolutely smoked in round two of the NCAA tournament that year. And I do think just looking at this team on paper, it's the worst Kansas team since that team, which isn't saying much considering that team was a two seed in the NCAA tournament and I just look at Kansas this year and say this you don't have a star player or an NBA player on this team but you have some solid players if Margaret Garrett averages like 15 or 16 a game I'd be surprised but I wouldn't be shocked he could be an all-american type player and maybe even big 12 player of the year That's how good he is on the defensive side of the ball, and he's shown flashes on offense, but he needs to be a little more consistent, which is very possible for him to do this year in a much bigger role. I just need to see it first. Both um, Garrett and Grant Foster are both guards that could create an interesting look for Kansas. I don't know if David McCormick is going to be dominant and impact the game like Yudoka Azubuki did, which can be another concern for Kansas in all this, but... Really, all of these question marks are why I have Baylor and West Virginia ahead of Kansas. But to me, Kansas is a top 15 team, and it really does speak to Bill Self's eye for talent and development because he has developed O'Shea Abaji, who wasn't very good and didn't really have that much buzz. Marcus Garrett wasn't a great freshman, but he has really improved throughout his career. Now, these guys are going to be all Big 12 caliber players, and for Garrett, he's going to be Kansas's best player. Bill Self has been able to do this year in and year out, and this year, I think when you look at Kansas, that's going to be on full display. He finds a Christian Braun as an underrated player, and he's proven that he could get a lot of fringe underrated players as pieces to start and then just keep developing them better and better and better. Joe Sell is a kid to watch for Kansas. He, it was his first offer, and he's already being buzzed around college basketball. Kansas, I think, has so many pieces, and I'm curious to see how Bill Self develops their roles. What is Christian Braun's role? Because last year, when he was inserted into the starting lineup, to me, that's when Kansas looked like they were at their best. Now, how does Bill Self uh, you know, fit together all of these pieces. Braun shot 44% from three last year, was good on defense, did his job, and in two years, I think he's going to be like the Grayson Allen villain type of college basketball. 
You look at Kansas's top nine, including Harris as a backup point guard, Whitefoot as your starting center, or as your backup center, excuse me, with a starting five of Thompson, Garrett, Abaji, Grant Foster, McCormick, and then Braun, Harris, Lightfoot, and Wilson, and, and Aruna off the bench. That's a really solid top nine, and it's going to be interesting to see what Enaruna does. Haven't really spoke much about him yet. I feel a little more confident in him because he last year he was coming off a torn ACL, and Jalen Wilson is coming off a torn ACL this year and not getting the time to play, plus the disrupted summer doesn't exactly help him. Uh, I think he could be a guy that possibly transfers going forward, former Michigan commit. And uh, when you look at Kansas, I don't think it's going to be the juggernaut we saw last year, but Kansas should still be in the Big 12 title hunt, and there is a real opportunity for them to have another really good season. And even though they do lose a lot with Dotson and Azabuki, I think they're going to need to find guys that could replace them in scoring and rebounding and so many of the other things they did uh, throughout last season, which made Kansas so good. Right now, I'm going to pick Kansas to finish in third place in the Big 12 behind West Virginia. I think they're like a back-end top 12, top 15 team. And yeah, I have Kansas finishing number three.